Hi everybody, I'm Leah. My channel is Common Sense Ethics. I hope you are doing well this evening. Um, I'm actually skipping um, my 20 year high school reunion tonight. Um, and instead, I'm gonna be talking to you about propaganda. Um, more specifically about how to become more resistant to it. Um, and I touched a little bit on that in my last video about how to have a more Socratic temperament and be more open-minded. But I just wanted to do a short video that went um, more into depth about this topic because it's just so important. And I think it's been on a lot of people's minds in the past several years. Um, um, and also propaganda might not be exactly what we think it is. So let's dig a bit deeper. Now, the French philosopher Jacques Allal wrote this book, Propaganda, the, Formations of Men, the Formation of Men's Attitudes. Now, Allal is a really interesting and iconoclastic um, thinker. I really gravitate towards um, people like that. But he basically made a study of um, propaganda techniques going back to the 19th century across different types of societies and his main conclusion was that so um, propaganda is a sociological phenomenon um, that is called upon to sort of solve the problems created by technology it exists to exist um, excuse me it exists to adjust sort of a normal person um, to an, an ever-changing social and technological environment, which, if you really think about it, is kind of abnormal considering the vast majority of our evolutionary history. In the past, there were microgroups um, that were very localized, and we claimed identity with, with those groups, and they were very insular. Um, for example, you know, the extended family group, um, the village, um, the hunter-gatherer band, um, even the church. And nowadays, um, these microgroups are disintegrating for the most part. And we have this vast interpersonal um, society. And we are sort of psychologically, Allah argues that we're psychologically ill-equipped to deal with it. Um, he thinks that modern technology has given us some freedom, but... Um, the trade-off is that we live in sort of a constant low-level state of anxiety and alienation. And propaganda is the result of this technological advancement because it really, some of it anyway, um, works to sort of fulfill our need for self-affirmation that's sort of left in this impersonal void. Um, so it basically, it integrates us into the modern world and it also acts more in the traditional sense as an intermediary between us and the state or the government. So that doesn't mean, you know, just because propaganda seems necessary in a, a technological society, that doesn't mean that it's harmless. And Alul argues that it, it actually makes us more totalitarian in our mindset, in our psychology, that it slowly undermines the fabric of democracy by creating a close-minded individual. So really intellectually rigid people who are prone to anger, um, emotionalism, have strong opinions, and so on. And that's an important point, and I'll come back to that. But he writes, With the help of propaganda, one can do almost anything, but certainly not create the behavior of a free man. A man who lives in a democratic society and who is subjected to propaganda is being drained of the democratic content itself. Understanding of others, respect for minorities, re-examination of his own opinions and absence of dogmatism so you can see why i sort of drew a parallel between um you know a lull sort of reasonable person and um the socratic temperament and i'll get i'll get to that a little bit later so he divides propaganda into two forms. The first one is what we usually think of when we hear the term propaganda, and that's agitation propaganda. So it's used to shake up society in some way, basically towards war, division, a certain political party or group, um, or a preferred outcome. And it usually plays upon pre-existing or implicit biases. It's sort of designed to fire people up by appealing to their antisocial instincts. And it's subversive, really, because once it starts to direct a person's prejudices, it's a lot harder for them to reconcile with their perceived opponents. Um, 
So propaganda in general does not allow for civil debate and reconciliation. Um, that's kind of its identifying characteristic. It's basically dogmatic and uncompromising. And this is a key thing to understand. So if you take just one point away from this video, you know, remember that propaganda is, um, it does not allow for civil debate. Um, it's basically very uncompromising and dogmatic. And Allah says that it's very easy to launch a revolutionary movement based on the hatred of a particular enemy. Um, when this was written, you know, um, in the 60s, the late 60s, that common enemy um, it might have been the bourgeois, um, the communist, uh, the colonialist, but it really, it, it, it doesn't matter. Um, so long as the person's not too, the person or group is not too powerful. <laughs> but elements, and you will, you'll notice though that elements on the so-called left and right of the political spectrum um, both use agitation propaganda. Basically, they use it against different targets. Nowadays, you'll see that the target could be it could be immigrants, it could be white males, it could be police, it could be minorities, it could be women, it could be conservative Christians, it could be Muslims, um, Republicans, Democrats, Trump voters, <laughs> the rich. I mean, it goes on and on. You get it, basically. But it's, it's the type of rhetoric that oversimplifies complex and sociological issues and boils them down to sort of a class of people who are the problem. Anytime you hear something like that, no matter who it's coming from, it's agitation propaganda. The other type of propaganda that he, Alul, identifies is integration propaganda, and it is much harder to spot. It's, um, I think, a little bit more sinister um, because it's so well interwoven into the fabric of everyday life. And um, we tend to think, this is what I was talking about in my previous video, um, I'll link to that in the description, but where people don't tend to be very Socratic in their outlook. We tend to think that we already know everything about various issues. And I, I can include myself in this. I'm trying, I try to become more Socratic, but, um, but anyway, one, um, one explanation for this sort of phenomenon is integration propaganda. So what is it exactly? Um, the point of it is sort of to direct us towards a specific um, worldview or furnish us with a ready-made set of beliefs. Um, and it's sort of to integrate us into this, like I said, this um, sort of mass society and hold this mass society together without us becoming too dissatisfied. So if you think about it, um, a, a person in a modern society really has to endure quite a bit. Um, you know, psychological alienation, um, the dissolution of sort of the family, uh, in taxes, you know, brutal wars, um, an inescapable work life, uh, and God knows what else um, sort of multiplies our individual frustrations. Um, and if you think about it also, modern societies are really held together by sort of a thin veneer. Only really geographical boundaries and sort of loose norms um, serve to unite millions of people. Um, but another really important thing to understand is uh, that propaganda exists in democracies. Um, so it has to exist in democracies, really, because uh, Alul argues that um, the state derives its perceived legitimacy through public opinion. So without public opinion, the state really can't sustain its power, at least not forever. Um, it really needs the mass in a democracy to participate for its continuity. And so it employs propaganda to sort of influence the mass. Um, because, it, you know, the mass, at least in general, people are not always inclined to study issues in a lot of detail. So propaganda of integration tends to furnish individuals with talking points and ready-made positions. Um, you know, you'll hear, you'll hear this from time to time. Um, and usually, um, these talking points are not really critical of government in general. Um, sometimes also democracies will use agitation propaganda to get the kind of the mass to demand what the state has already decided to do. So for example, if they want to go to war, they'll drum up war propaganda to try to get people to support it. So who is vulnerable to propaganda? And the answer is, we all are, so long as we live in a technological society. 
right, in the modern world. Um, but Alul says that sort of counterintuitively, intellectuals are especially vulnerable. And um, you might think that it would be the least educated members of society, right, who are the most vulnerable to it. But he says no, and he says the reason for that is that intellectuals tend to digest the largest amounts of sort of secondhand, unverifiable information via news um, consumption. Um, and that really, that really resonates with me quite a bit. Um, if you think about sort of the fake news phenomenon and fact checking and all these things that really a lot of what we hear is quite unverifiable and we do hear it secondhand. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. So solutions. Um, how do we re how do we become more resistant to propaganda and its effects? I would say that there are three steps. Um, the first one is sort of to recognize that there's a problem um, or that this can be a problem. Um, it's no longer sort of the 19th century where psychology and modern technologies were still in their inf in, you know, infancy. Basically, these two have converged and today's propaganda can be really highly sophisticated and very well integrated into our lives. Um, so the second solution would be to, besides sort of acknowledging that propaganda is out there and that it could be influencing you if you aren't really Socratic enough and questioning your own assumptions, the second solution would be to be careful about how much and what type of media you expose yourself to. So using technology with all its benefits and everything um, is also, though, to open the door to propaganda. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword. Um, when we read the news, if we watch, um, watch a movie or TV, respond to like social media, we should consider the messages and their purpose. Um, you know, is the implicit point to direct us towards a specific worldview or furnish us with a, you know, a set of beliefs, you know, so we should always analyze what we're seeing. And the third um, solution would be, and this is probably the most important, would be to be a reasonable person with a more Socratic temperament. Now, what does that mean? Um, a lull suggests that the best way to respond to propaganda is by not contributing to the problem yourself. So that means not responding with a propaganda of your own or basically angry, emotional, or dogmatic mindset. Um, so if you see that, if you see like a dogmatic mindset, you know, propaganda could be there. Um, so instead, you would respond with a reasonable, like a reasoned, um, respectful debate, with dialogue, with cordial conversation. Um, and you wouldn't really be easily angered because it helps you to think with um, sort of a little bit of distance when you don't, you're not easily angered and um, you also show more respect for other people generally and for their opinions. Now that doesn't mean that all opinions are of equal value. Socrates thought that opinions are, are like pots that they either hold water or they don't, but we should nevertheless respect differing opinions. Um, Alal writes, a reasonable person recognizes the limits and uncertainty of sources of information and shows a certain intellectual humility, being ready to cede ground to others in light of additional facts or better judgments. And I really like that. And finally, um, we should be more Socratic. Um, we should try to discover our own errors in reasoning and question things. And if you find yourself in a dogmatic mindset about something, um, take a step back. Um, think about why you hold that opinion and is it really true? Um, and so anyway, this can be kind of a depressing subject, so I want to leave you with something more positive. Um, I think that the silver, there's a silver lining here um, and that's that by becoming more reasonable, right? You'll grow as a person. Uh, we can grow as people by sort of continually expanding our capabilities for self-examination, for judgment, and for self-reliance. Um, so that's what I'd like to leave you with. Uh, so thanks so much. Please um, share this video. This is a really important topic that I'd love more people to be talking about and to be aware of. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please um, click subscribe and click the little bell icon. So once it's, um, it's filled in, basically you'll get alerts whenever I post new content. So thanks for, um, thanks again. That's all for now and I hope you have a great evening.